Woohoo! We are back for the 10th week of the walk on virtual live, whatever. We were trying to do this live and um, it just kept going in and out. So some of you are with me and I just feel really bad. I feel really bad about the seniors because I really wanted to talk to you live for, you know, your last good talk. So I hope that you'll tune into this. Um, who knows, maybe it's the weather. It's just a little bit jinky out and it made my internet unstable because we really don't have any problems with the internet normally. So I'm sorry about that, but here we are. I'm taping it and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it and be able to watch it um, at your leisure. So um, we did the raffle and congratulations to the two winners. It was Miriam for the Earth's Edge gift certificate and Kyla Weersma for um, Starbucks, right? Yeah, Starbucks. So congrats. Um, take your Bibles out, please, and open them to Psalm 119. And while you're looking for that, it's going to be Psalm 119, verses 1 through 3. Um, I'd like to open in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful evening. We thank you for our year at the walk. Um, although it's been disrupted, we've been able to be creative and find some different ways to meet people um, and meet the needs of our spiritual, our spiritual needs and our um, relationship needs. Uh, we just ask you to be with us tonight um, as we explore staying on course and as we talk to the seniors, we just ask you to be with us as we um, open your word and learn a little bit more about you and how you help to keep us on course. In thy name alone we pray. Amen. So at the beginning of every school year, I usually start off the walk and tell you that the leaders, um, myself and the leaders, believe that the Bible is truth, that it's relevant that what's in here will help you in your future and help you to stay on course. Um, <clears throat> and I am talking to all of you tonight, not just the seniors, but there's an extra focus on graduates. In some ways, we're all graduating for some, from something. Uh, you're launching onto that next big thing. And um, even in this age of COVID, there's things that we're launching from maybe from homeschooling to summer, right? This can be a priceless time, but it also can be very costly. So stay on course. We're launching from maybe one grade to the next. Yes, you could be graduating and headed to college or to um, a career, but maybe you're going from ninth grade to 10th grade or 11th grade to 12th grade. Whatever it is, um, we're, we're graduating from something. Where there's more challenges, there's more freedoms, and there's more temptations. Stay on course. We could be launching into new experiences. Hopefully soon we'll safely be able to go back to our jobs or start new jobs. We'll be back in our friend groups, and maybe people have changed a little bit. We'll hopefully we'll be back to our plans that we made. And um, we just encourage you to stay on course. I want to direct you to the middle of the Bible, Psalm 119. The author of this particular psalm and a lot of the psalms is King David. I'm going to read it from two different versions, one from the NIV and one from the message. So go to verses 1 through 3. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statues and seek him with all of their heart. They do not worry, but follow his ways. Now we're going to switch to a different version, to a different translation. This is um, from the message. You're blessed when you stay on course walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road that he set. Psalm 119, 1 through 3, the message. So I'm going to tell you a story that kind of goes along this and about 
staying on course. When I was between my freshman and sophomore years at Calvin College, a friend of mine, um, her father bought this big fancy boat down in Fort Lauderdale and they asked us to be on the crew for it. Well, those of us, I mean, I had a little sunfish that we had out at our cottage. And um, other than that, I hadn't had a whole lot of experience on boats, but I was part of one of 10 on this crew. We had to get it from Fort Lauderdale, and our job was, I was only on for two weeks because I had to work after that, but the, the object was to get this from Fort Lauderdale, this boat, all the way to Michigan. It was a 44-foot French Benetou. It was beautiful. We landed in Fort Lauderdale on an absolutely gorgeous, perfect June day. Sunny, breathtaking, beautiful. And we took off, you know, got all our supplies on, took off, and by the time we could not see land, we were probably about four or five hours out, um, an incredible storm whipped up out of nowhere. We hadn't even gotten our sea legs. We didn't know where we were sleeping. We didn't hadn't really moved in. And um, this incredible storm comes out of nowhere. When you're on the ocean, they just whip up very quickly, scared us to death. And um, I remember all of a sudden the captain is just shouting all these orders about, lines and rigging and get the sails down and so um i'm sure he was pretty startled also so we had our life jackets on we were had lifelines connected and we um were laying on top of the sails and my friend kim who's a lifelong friend of mine since we were kindergarten she's quoting psalm 23 though i walk through the shadow of death i will fear no evil and i'm screaming we are gonna die and we went from paradise, Fort Lauderdale, gorgeous, to panic. And we made it through. I mean, this storm scared the bejeebies out of us. But I will tell you that, um, you know, in my mind, I remember it kind of like deadliest catch kind of storms, but probably wasn't that dramatic. But it was pretty bad. Um, so from panic, from paradise to panic. When we got through the storm, the next morning, the captain had turned on this gorgeous um, Christian music and sermon and uh, the dolphins. It's completely calm, glassy water, and the dolphins are swimming next to our boat. It was fantastic. And I, w I just ke I kept thinking, I thought it was incredible that he could keep us on course through that, through that incredible storm. A few nights later on that same trip, um, my friend Lori and Kim and I were on night watch. So that means everyone else is sleeping. This is really not a good idea. But all of everyone else was sleeping and we were in the intercoastal, so we probably thought we were gonna be fine. We just had to not go into, like we had to stay in the middle. And I was holding the map, that was my job. Everybody else, the, the my two friends were navigating or they were steering, kind of more important jobs. I was just holding the map, like looking good. And um, a wind caught the map. There's no GPS at this time. And the wind caught the map and flew it off the boat uh, into the water, into the pitch dark. No way to get it. I lost the map. I lost the map. Freaking me out. But once again, the captain got us back on course. He also gave us a lot of grace. I've often thought about that time in my life and the parallel to my Christian walk. And at times my relationship is like with God is like paradise. It's like being in Fort Lauderdale on a sunny June day, getting ready to go on a big adventure. And sometimes it's like an incredible storm whipped up out of nowhere. And I feel like I'm going to die. And there is times that, um, I feel like I'm in some sort of control and that I, I, I'm taking this walk. I've been, you know, in the word, praying, communication with friends about my relationship with God. And sometimes I just need a whole lot of grace from God. No matter where I am on this walk, I make every effort to stay on course. I make every effort to hold on to my map not let the map fly off the boat. Seniors, I especially, this is especially important to me. <laughs> Seniors, it's especially important that you hold on to your map. And we often have talked about that, like I started this talk, that the Bible is truth. And it is um, not only a roadmap 
for you, but it is a course. It's how you stay on course. The next chapter of your life, you're going to have a lot of questions. You're going to have a lot of things that are going to come up in your, and I'm telling you that as old as, you know, as ancient writers wrote this, it's relevant. Every question can be found. The answers can be found here. So let's go back to Psalm 119. I'm just going to read that one more time. You're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow his directions, doing his best, doing your best to find him, doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road. He set. Just a couple more things that um, are directed to the seniors, but also to all of you. Um, if I have not said this already, seniors, congratulations on your graduation. I just posted a picture of Caleb. I had to stop by at their house to drop something off, and he came out fully in his graduation um, robe and hat and gown, and it was really cool. So I got to take a picture, and I posted that on, I believe, on Instagram, so you can check that out. I always wonder what we're going to do without all of you. We get, like, every time there's a senior class that leaves, I just, there's a big loss for me. I get very kind of, um, I get really attached to you, and so do your leaders. If you get time, thank those senior leaders, Sarah and Barb and Kevin and Martin, and maybe all of the leaders, people who've just invested in you, that taken care of you. Even if you don't attend the walk all that often, they see you at church and they make an effort to tell you that they care about you and they wonder about what's going on in your sport, in your, um, in your season, in whatever's going on in your art. So take time to thank them for being part of your life. We will miss you. We will definitely miss you, and I hope you miss us a little, but I want you to know that we are impressed with you. For one thing, you're so smart. This class is so smart. The things that you do and the talents that you have for music and tech and sports, academics, I'm so impressed. You are volunteers. You work, this is a very important line that I wrote that I really feel like I hope you hear this. You work hard to make other people's lives easier. Please continue to do this. You work hard to make other people's lives easier. Do this when you in your future, when you are volunteering at your colleges or helping at work or you're volunteering at your church or in your cities, wherever you are. But don't just volunteer. Don't just do it because it's socially acceptable. Do it because you ser serve your fellow man because of what God has done for you. That God has given you salvation through Jesus Christ. That's why we serve. In Colossians 1.10 it says, We pray that you will that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. Beautiful. I love that. We pray that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. When I think of you, seniors, I will remember the fun times, uh, fall weekends, Timberwolf Lake or Camp Geneva, I'll remember how hard you worked on serve projects, the growth that I've witnessed when you were on, on mission trips or your leadership at CLC. And now we release you with pride and a few tears, but you're ready. God bless.